that you are the same. Like we are the same. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We all have triumphs. We all have highs. We all have lows. We all have pain and love and all these things. We have so much power and control over our destiny, our emotions, our feelings, our reactions. Like we really do have that control. friends welcome back to acting my age podcast with me Rohini. hi happy wednesday <laughs> um today's episode is just gonna be a bit rambly a bit ranty i'm sure at times and it's just uh we're gonna be talking about a topic i just have been thinking about a lot and it's very important to me and it's very important for you it's important for everyone to it's one of the key steps to living your best life and um yeah just thriving and it is personal responsibility um I think it's something that I feel like a lot of our generation is lacking to be honest Sage and I talk about this a lot and that's the main uh The main thing we want to instill in our future kids is how important personal responsibility is. So we're just going to be talking about that today and also self-sovereignty, which is a term that I learned pretty recently, I suppose, and I just just really like it. Sovereignty, I just like that word also, but self-sovereignty is a really nice way to sum up everything, everything that is important, I guess. So yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. I have some quotes and things from books that I really enjoy. And I also asked you guys a lot of questions on my podcast, Instagram, and I'm going to be sharing some of your answers and just talking and discussing all about personal responsibility. I hope that this episode will be beneficial for you guys. And, um, yeah, just thank you for tuning in. Let's get into it. Okay, so Google says personal responsibility is defined as the idea that human beings choose, instigate, or otherwise cause their own actions. The corollary idea is that because we choose our actions, we can be held morally accountable or legally liable. That's not a very, I don't love that definition. Okay, so that's the Google definition of personal responsibility, which is fine. It's kind of boring, kind of bland. But for me, personal responsibility is, uh, it's not blaming anyone else. It's putting all of the, just taking your life into your own hands um, and accepting that at some point, um, blaming others is pointless and all of the, like, instead of blaming someone else for causing you to be angry or causing you to be annoyed or causing you stress or whatever, it's turning that around and saying, what do I need to work on within myself so this doesn't make me stressed out or this doesn't make me angry? Or in turn saying, oh, why am I accepting this type of behavior from someone else? It's just realizing that everything everyone else doing is really none of your concern. All you should be concerned about is you, how you can react, and what you can do about the situation. You can't control anything else in this life except yourself and how you react to things. And to me, that's personal responsibility. It's like just I feel like oftentimes from what I've seen on social media and just being around people, um, a lot of our generation, it's personal responsibility is not as prevalent as in past generations because many of us, you know, each my dad and I were just talking about this, actually, each generation they say, you know, I'm going to raise my kids so they don't have to go through what I went through. Like, I'm going to give my kids a better life, which is obviously wonderful. We all want to do that. Um, We all want to, you know, give our kids opportunities and give them safety and comfort, all of that. But as each generation gets, there's more comforts, things aren't as hard, they don't have to work as much. This is obviously a generalization. Um, Then, you know, 
sometimes the value of hard work, personal responsibility, respect, um, having morals and values and um, like emphasis on community and helping your neighbor and all those type of things kind of get kind of get lo- get lost. And I don't feel like social media is great <laughs> for accepting personal responsibility or encouraging it because, again, everything can be anonymous. People can make fake accounts on YouTube. There's no photos. It's just a random name, username. People can say whatever they want. And there's no personal responsibility because you're not a person. You're just anonymous. So it's very interesting. I'm very, very interested to see how, like, the next generations will turn out because at least for Sage and I, knowing how a lot of our peers act and how they um, can sometimes, this is just obviously my opinion, what I've observed sometimes, it's become very common to blame others for your own whatever. Like it's just easier to blame, 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 assume, judge, And instead of just being like, okay, yeah, that's not my cup of tea or that's not for me. I'm just going to move on or, oh, why am I cyberbullying? Like, let's get to the root of the problem. Or if someone has different values or opinions than me, then they must be the worst human and I'm going to ruin their life. (laughs) Dramatic. But it's just so extreme now. Like, I really think So anyway, what I'm saying is now from at least for Sage and I and some of our close friends, what we've observed with people in our generation, our peers, it's making us want to do the opposite. So it's going back. So it's like, what was it? So also, it's kind of like the similar um, idea that one generation, my dad's generation or no, my my grandma's generation, they got married really, really young. Like my grandma got married at 18 and had kids at, at 18 And then it, you know, goes later and later. So then the next generation gets married later. And then my mom's generation um, was all about waiting. Like, wait until you're, you know, in your 30s. Wait to have kids. Like, go work. Don't don't be a housewife. Like, kind of thing. And then now it's opposite. And we talk about this too. Just kind of funny. Like, I feel like it's kind of come back around now to get married young. At least I did that. But you know, there's, there's communities now that it's pretty common to get married young and, um, it's not a, it's not, it's not like a, I don't know, things just go, I'm not really explaining this very well, but it's just interesting how it's all kind of cyclical. So I just wonder our generation and younger, like Sage's little brother, he's, um, 19. And I just feel like he, cause he grew up with always having a phone always having technology. And then even younger than that, the girls who used to babysit, they're 15 now. Crazy. And I just wonder like, what, how are you guys going to turn out? What are going to be the main things when you're, um, you know, adults, when you're in college and when you're parents, like, how is it going to go? It's just so fascinating. So basically Sage and I want to go the opposite. We're like, fuck technology, even though obviously technology is amazing, has its benefits. Fuck technology. I don't want to live in the city. I don't want to be on our phones. I don't want to raise our kids doing this and that and on their on the internet and blah, blah, blah. Like, we're going to go out, move out on a farm. Um, you know, our kids are going to play in nature. They're going to go to alternative schools. They're going to do all these things. Like, they are, we are going to try to keep them away from technology as long as possible and off social media as long as possible because – You know, for us, we grew up with it and we can see how toxic it can be. So it's just interesting. And then like, I'm just so curious to see how it's all going to go, go down. But then it's also different because like the 15 year old I was talking about, she grew up with social media always being part of her life during puberty, during her, you know, formative years, all of these things. So then maybe it's a different effect on that age because they don't know anything different. It's just so interesting. It's so crazy. I just feel like we're in a giant science experiment. Do you guys ever feel like that? It's such an experiment. How is this all going to turn out? Who freaking knows? But I love thinking about it. It's so, so interesting. Also, another fun thing to ponder. um, I've been, I told you guys already, I really like Aubrey Marcus. I listen to his podcast all the time. And he always talks about how um, important it is that people have a tribe. Humans need 
a tribe. We are tribal beings. We like to have community and we, we have evolved like <laughs> to, we always had tribes and we've evolved now that we don't like our ancestors had a tribe. They had a community. There was always people around them. It takes a village to raise a child. Like that's such a saying, but it's not the case anymore. Yeah. Maybe you have friends, maybe your family helps you out, but literally it takes a village. That's how it used to be. Everyone would pitch in a hand. Everyone would help. It's a community effort and you're never alone. It's just so different now. We're so isolated and, you know, biologically, I believe that we're, you know, we're tribal people. And I think some of the reason why mental health problems are so rampant right now is because people are isolated. And I think it's, it's like a subliminal thing. I don't think we even know that this is why, but I think it's because we're so disconnected from the concept of having a tribe and having our tribe. Obviously, when you have people who love you and care about you and listen to you and respect you, you aren't as, you know, you aren't as sad. You don't feel alone. You don't feel like your problems are just yours to bear. You have a shoulder to cry on. You feel supported. You feel loved. You feel respected. And that is so, so important. But how many of us really prioritize that? So that's something that's really interesting. There's this book um, I read called A Tribe. <laughs> it's called Tribe by Sebastian Younger or Junger. I'm guessing it's Younger. It was really, really, really good. I just gave it to my dad to read. And it's mostly about how it's a very interesting book. He studies, he's a, he was a war journalist and he studied um, wartime communities and depression and suicide rates during war wartime and then after and then also depression suicide for um people in the military soldiers and then after when they get home veterans it's so so interesting and it's and he kind of makes a case in the book that why PTSD numbers are so so high and why suicide for veterans is so high is not necessarily because of what they saw in war, which obviously that correlates. This is, again, I'm just quoting him. He has this all um, sourced and everything if you want to read his book, but it's not necessarily because of what they witnessed. It's that when they come home, they have no one to share it with and they have no one. They don't have a tribe anymore. They, they went from a community and people who had their back, literally, um, and people who understood, like, there was a commonality. We were all in this together. We all experienced the same things. We know what it's like. We got you. Like, there's a there's a real sense of community and commonality. And then when they get home, it's not like that anymore. And it's just this huge switch up. And that, he talks about in the book, that is um, a big reason why PTSD, depression, suicide are so common with, with veterans because there's, they don't have their tribe anymore. It's such an interesting book. So really would recommend reading it if you guys are interested in the topic. Um, but anyway, tribes are just so important to find your tribe. And, um, I think social media can be great because it can bring like-minded people together, but it also is very clicky. I feel like because social media is not about, it's, it's, well, for one, people want you to have a certain niche. I was, my friend just posted about this. Like when you're a multifaceted human, but Instagram wants you to have one niche, like people who have one type of content really do well because it's very consistent. It's very clear. People know what they're getting. They follow along. You know, if you really enjoy posting about um, cocktails and that's your thing, you make cocktails and you post recipes, people are going to want to follow you because you post cocktail recipes, you know, and it's like you get in your niche and I feel that's the same way oftentimes with um, your interests and your opinions. So it's like kind of all or nothing sometimes on social media. So you can find your tribe, but then you're not really as aware of the other side of the aisle. And I think that is why a lot of people feel so um, strongly on social media and they f they f can speak to others who do who have different opinions in them with such disrespect because again, it's an echo chamber and you just think that what, um, since you're around what you believe all the time, you think that is the only way to be or the best way to be or whatever. It's very interesting. I love reading about social media and all of it and how it affects us and how we're just so different now because of it. It's so, so interesting. So anyway, I'm just trying to 
kind of step back and observe. I just sit back and observe all these, all these interesting things that's going on in society right now, because we are living during a fucking crazy time. Like let's all just take a breath, take a step back and remind ourselves how nuts of a time we are living in right now. Like Catherine and I just went on a little gals trip. If you saw on Instagram, it was so, so fun. Um, just for two days, we went locally to Bainbridge Island. It was so fun. We were literally thriving. We were saying it was like, it's, it's like three free therapy. Yeah. We paid for the, the trip, but it like, we both just got our, like got our problems out, vented, cried, hugged each other, consoled each other, really offered each other some nice therapy that besties, that the besties can. It's just, it was so nice, but oh gosh, what was I going to say? Damn it. I got lost. Damn it. What was I going to say? Well, uh, yeah, I can't remember what I was going to say about Catherine and I, but anyway, what I was going to say earlier, I just had a matcha, so my brain's going quite fast. Um, I was going to say earlier, there's also a lot of studies that um, perhaps another reason for, I think maybe this was in Sebastian Younger's book also, um, another reason why depression, suicide, anxiety, all these these rates are so, so high in our generation and, and other generations, but continuing to climb and climb and climb is because, so this, this study is for my, my age, like 23, I think it's twenties to 35. So I guess millennials, I don't, I think I'm technically not a millennial, but I don't really identify with, is it generation Z? Don't really identify with them either. Cause it seems different. I feel like I'm in the, in between. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. That's another topic, but Anyway, um, there's these studies that um, our generation has um, does not emphasize organized religion. Like a lot of our generation does not have a religion. They don't identify with being a certain religion. They don't go to church every week. They don't have that community. And in past generations, um, that was a really big em- emphasis in their community. Like, okay, we go to church on Sundays and there's just this, again, commonality there. And it feels like your tribe, your community. And we don't have that. Like, I I don't, I only know a few people in my life that go to church regularly, have very devout religion, religious faith. Um, and I think it's very, very beautiful when you have that and you have that, um, just that community. It really does so much for you to know that those people are there for you and you all have something in common. Um, and also of course, along with that is that you believe that there's something else out there. There's a higher power. And that is something that can really, in a way, ease anxiety, ease depression, because you feel like you're not alone. Again, you're not alone. You have someone, a higher power looking out for you, guiding you leading the way and when you're you know at your at your darkest on your knees crying or you can pray and ask for help and you and you feel the connection that there's someone else out there there's something out there that's going to help you because you know when you feel alone that's when things get really really dark so I think that is so interesting and I kind of I just wonder how how it's all going to go because it seems like spirituality is really it's becoming popular, obviously, um, which is great. I think I think that's wonderful that it is becoming more mainstream. And uh, I don't know. I just wonder. I wonder, wonder. Because if we're all doing our little spiritual practices at home, isolated, it's still not the same thing as being together in a group. So um, I really want to find a group of like-minded spiritual people that I can, you know, join I, in a way, I wish I was in California because I see a lot more groups down there, like go to do sound baths and meditations and breath work and yoga and go to retreats and stuff. Like I would absolutely love to do that. So, you know, we'll see. But anywho, that was a long little rant. Um, but I just think it's so interesting. We're living in a gosh dang experiment. <laughs> some books. Um, I wanted to read a few quotes. I brought out letting go again. You guys know this is my all time most impactful book I've read. And I actually saw 
it popped up on my YouTube. Russell Brand like had was holding up Letting Go, the same book, and was like my most impactful book. I'm like, wow, interesting. Um, Russell Brand. All I remember him is like just Katy Perry. That's like all I remember about him. But um, anyway, this is Letting Go by David Hawkins. If you guys haven't read it already, one million percent recommend this book. Changed my life. It was the first sort of spiritual book I read and it was very, 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 very impactful. And I got it out again and I was reading through all the pages I underlined and bookmarked. And again, my mind's just blown rereading these words. So much wisdom here, so much to take home. Ugh, I just can't recommend this book enough. So, so this is going back to personal responsibility and ultimately accepting that you're the only one that has your back and you're the only one that can take responsibility for everything that you want in life, which includes taking responsibility for healing your wounds, taking responsibility for how you react to things, taking responsibility for um, your priorities. What do you do during your day? Are you, you know, prioritizing things that will propel you forward and get you closer to where you dream of? Or are you prioritizing things that keep you stuck or, or hurt you ultimately? Are you prioritizing, you know, eating well, exercising, moving, hanging out with people that lift you up and um, like-minded people. Are you prioritizing learning and relaxing and self-care and going on walks and being in nature and drinking water and all those things? Like, what are you prioritizing? Self, personal responsibility and self-sovereignty. That just means, you know, I got me. I got me and I'm the only one that I got. So about time to get serious get serious. So here's some excerpts from letting go that I thought kind of went along with that. And I think for me, especially, and I think for a lot of people, the hardest part about, about the, the full aspect of personal responsibility is that you, you accept that you accept your baggage. Basically you accept the the wounds and the things that you need to heal and what you have to do to heal them. And it's not easy to do it's not easy to do it's not a you know not an easy little thing you get to skip through like that that's hard and when you catch yourself being mean or judgmental or assuming things about people or getting annoyed easily or snapping or whatever it's like no instead of blaming the other person because that's you know sometimes automatic reaction blame the other person for doing this to you Like, why would this person do this to me? Why did this happen to me? Why, blah, 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 why, blah, blah. Like, instead of blaming, blaming, you accept, oh, I, why did I react like this? Why did this person cause me to feel like this? Like, why, why did this come up within me? What does this mean? What, like, how can I get to the bottom of this? What do I need to work on? That's responsibility for yourself. Because it's all you can control. So, okay. It is said that most people spend their lives regretting the past and fearing the future. Therefore, they are unable to experience joy in the present. Many of us have assumed that this is our human fate, our lot, and the best that we can do is just grin and bear it. Philosophers have sometimes made hay out of this negativistic, pessimistic approach and developed whole systems of nihilism. Nihilism? I don't know how to say that. (laughs) N-I-H-I-L-I-S-M. These philosophers, some of whom have become celebrated over the years, are obviously mere victims of painful emotions that they did not handle and which triggered endless intellectualization and elaboration. Some spent their entire lifetimes constructing sophisticated intellectual systems to justify what is glaringly obvious as a simple, suppressed emotion. One of the most effective tools for handling the past is the creation of a different context. What this means is that we give it a different meaning. We take on a different attitude about the past difficulty or trauma, and we acknowledge the hidden gift in it. The value of this technique was first recognized in psychiatry by Viktor Frankl. He explained the approach, which he called logotherapy, in his famous book, Man's Search for Meaning. His clinical and personal experience demonstrated that emotional events and traumatic occurrences will change considerably and be healed if a new meaning is placed around them. Frankel told of his own experience in the Nazi concentration camps wherein he came to see his physical and psychic suffering as an opportunity to achieve inner triumph. And this is a quote from him. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. 
Frankel recon- recontextualized the horrific circumstances to hold profound meaning for the human spirit. Every life experience, no matter how tragic, contains a hidden lesson. When we discover and acknowledge the hidden gift that is there, a healing takes place. In the example of the man who lost his job after some time has passed, he looked back and saw that his former job was stunting, that he had been in a rut. Frankly, the job had given him an ulcer. Prior to losing the job, he had seen only the pleasures from it. Once outside of the situation, he began to see the costs that he'd been paying, physically, mentally, and emotionally. After losing the job, he was open to discovering new abilities and new talents. In fact, he began a new, more promising career. Sorry, that's, I could just read you this whole book. I love this whole book. But So life events are opportunities to grow, expand, experience, and develop. In some cases, it seems in retrospect that there was actually this unconscious purpose behind the event, as though our unconscious knew that something important had to be learned, and painful as it was, it was the only way it could be brought into experience. Okay, next little excerpt from the same book. It must be remembered that we are free to acknowledge and surrender our feelings, and we are free not to surrender. As we examine our I can'ts and find out that they are really I won'ts, it doesn't mean that we have to let go of the negative feelings that result in the I won'ts. We are perfectly free to refuse to let go. We are free to hang on to negativity as long as we want. There is no law that says we have to give it up. We are free agents. But it makes a big difference in our self-concept to realize that I won't do something is quite different than to think that I'm a victim and I can't. For instance, we can choose to hate somebody if we want, We can choose to blame them. We can choose to blame circumstances. But being more conscious and realizing that we are freely choosing this attitude puts us in a higher state of consciousness and therefore closer to greater power and mastery than being the helpless victim of a feeling. One of the biggest blocks to overcome in getting out of depression and apathy is that of blame. Blame is a whole subject in itself. Looking into it is rewarding. To begin with, there are a lot of payoffs to blame. We get to be innocent. We get to enjoy self-pity. We get to be the martyr and the victim. The martyr? The martyr. And the victim. And we get to be the recipients of sympathy. Perhaps the biggest payoff of blame is that we get to be the innocent victim and the other party is the bad one. This is my main qualm with social media. That very, very sentence. Um, We see this game played out in the media constantly. Such as the endless blame games dramatized in a multitude of of controversies, mudslinging, character assassinations, and lawsuits. In addition to the emotional payoff, blame has considerable financial benefits. Therefore, it is a tempting package to be the innocent victim, as it's often financially rewarded. Blame is the world's greatest excuse. It enables us to remain limited and small without feeling guilty. But there is a cost, the loss of our freedom. Also, the role of victim brings with it a self-perception of weakness, vulnerability, and helplessness which are the major components of apathy and depression. The first step out of blame is to see that we are choosing to blame. Other people who have had similar circumstances have forgiven, forgotten, and handled the same situation in a very different way. We earlier saw this case with Viktor Frankl, who chose to forgive the Nazi prison guards and to see a hidden gift in his experience at the concentration camps. Because others, such as Frankl, have chosen not to blame, that option is also open to us. We have to be honest and realize that we are blaming because we choose to blame. This is true, no matter how justified the circumstances may appear to be. It is not a matter of right or wrong. It is merely a matter of taking responsibility for our own consciousness. It is a totally different situation to see that we choose to blame rather than to think that we have to blame. In this circumstance, the mind often thinks, well, if the other person or event is not to blame, then I must be. Blaming others or ourselves is simply not necessary. The attraction of blame arises in early childhood as a daily occurrence in the classroom, playground, and at home among siblings. Blame is a central issue in the endless court proceedings and lawsuits that characterize our society. In truth, blame is just another one of those negative programs that we have allowed our mind to buy because we never stop to question it. Why must something always be someone's fault? Why must the whole concept of wrong be introduced to the situation in the first place? Why must one of us be wrong, bad, or at fault? What seemed like a good idea at the time may not have turned out well. That's all. Unfortunate events may have just happened. Oh, I could just read you guys this whole book. Honestly, it is so, 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 so good. Um, But what I really like about that is, you know, guys, we all fuck up. We all mess up. Literally every single one of us. No one is perfect. No one has gone throughout life without messing up. 
um, obviously to different degrees, but it's just how it is. And the thing that makes me more frustrated than anything is how on social media, cancel culture, which I kind of want to do a whole episode about cancel culture. We'll see. Um, cancel culture, the very root of it is that someone's bad and someone's good. And to, it seems like it means, it seems like when you're blaming, blaming, blaming so much, someone, you know, trying to destroy someone, cancel them, hashtag blah, blah, blah is over, whatever it is, whoever it is. Um, is it not that every, everyone mis- makes mistakes. So this person is just another person making a s- mistake and pretty much would bet that everyone else hopping on to cancel this person, commenting, you know, whatever has made a mistake too. And I think it's pretty, it's pretty sad and it's pretty ignorant to act like, you know, you're higher than thou and mightier than thou and you've never made a mistake. So since you've never made a mistake, it's very easy to hop on and shit on this other person for simply making a mistake or for doing something you don't agree with or whatever it is. Like, that's just bullshit. Stop wasting your energy. Why are you wasting your energy on trying to cancel someone because they made a mistake? Like, we're all human. We all make mistakes. And if you can't accept that someone else made a mistake, how the hell are you ever gonna going to accept that you made a mistake? One of my favorite parts of Matthew McConaughey's book, Green, Green Lights, is how he, um, he walked to this monastery and he talked with this monk for like hours and hours, just ranting and ranting about all his problems and all of his sins and all of his things that he regretted and everything he was worried about and just talked for like, I think, I don't know, three hours or something. And the monk just listened and listened, didn't say anything. And then I think Matthew McConaughey finally finished and just looked at him and the monk was like, me too. And that's the most powerful thing. That is the lesson that I hope we can learn. That's the lesson I want to learn is that no matter how badly someone messed up, if you can see the like innate humanity in it and you can have compassion for this person, again, this is my high horse. I will die on it. I don't care. If you can have compassion for this person, that is, that's like, that's the ultimate level of consciousness because you're just, you know that you are the same. Like we are the same. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We all have triumphs. We all have highs. We all have lows. We all have pain and love and all these things. And once you can acknowledge and accept that this person messed up and you mess up too, and we're all in this together, ultimately, um, that's, that's what's so beautiful. Like I loved that part. Me too. You know, um, Aubrey Marcus talks about this a lot too. It's like, no matter what you say, no matter what you've done that you regret, no matter, you know, your biggest mistakes or things, terrible things you've done, like, um, having someone that can just look, look at you and just have, you know, be there for you and say, I am that too. You know, I am that too. Like no matter what your pains or struggles or highs or low, I am that too. Like we're all human. So that's my biggest thing with social media that really sucks. It's like, why must you be on your high horse? It's very, it's very interesting. Um, cancel culture is very interesting. I hope someone does like a whole documentary or some great, great in-depth study on it because it's just very interesting. And, um, yeah, I should, I should maybe do a whole episode on that, but we'll see. (laughs) So the other very, 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 very important aspect of personal responsibility and self-sovereignty, which I'll tell you the definition of self-sovereignty. Okay, so the definition of sovereignty is supreme power or authority. Um, Also, the authority of a state to govern itself and also a self-governing state. So self-sovereignty is you are the governor of yourself, your own body, your own consciousness, your actions. You are the governor and you have supreme power and authority over yourself. No one else has power over you. You are so you're a sovereign nation. You are in complete control of yourself. 
That is self-sovereignty. And I think it's very, very powerful if you really get into it. Because here's a, here's a key thing. No one else has your back like you do. And at times, yes, you know, if you are in a bad way or you are, you know, you need help. Your friends, your family members, your trusted loved ones, they will help you and lift you up and remind you how wonderful and amazing you are and how great you are. But it won't make an impact and won't make a dent until you believe it. Because, again, you're the only one in control of yourself. And if you want to give away that control and that power to other people for a while, go ahead. But it's not going to get you that far because everyone's wrapped up in their own shenanigans. We're all living our own lives. We're all wrapped up in our daily problems, our daily stressors, our to-do lists, our lovers, our whatever. Everyone's wrapped up in their own stuff. And, you know, as much as someone can be there for you, can help you and support you, they still have their own life to live. And once you learn and accept and own that you are 1000% responsible for yourself and no one else is, no one else is going to have um, your back like you do, you just start to realize like, oh shit, all these little things that I do really, really matter. Like every single thing that affects you and your life and your decisions you make, it's, it's very important. And what you surround yourself with is extremely, extremely important. It's not like a trivial little thing, you know? And my thing, I really don't feel comfortable talking about this very much, but I just want to encourage you guys to have sovereignty over yourselves in every aspect of your life. Don't hand over your control and your power to someone else. That includes social media. That includes strangers on the internet. That includes the media. That includes CNN, Fox, MSNBC, whatever. Don't that includes the newspapers, that includes magazines, that includes random articles on your Twitter. Don't hand over your power to someone else. Just because it seems nice, it seems convincing, it seems like the right thing, doesn't mean that it is. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but don't just hand it over without thinking about it. Now more than ever, now more than ever, we are being asked to follow a certain narrative, which is that's a whole fucking other topic and I don't really want to get into all of it. But all I'm saying is because I care about you guys, I really, really do. Just be aware. Be aware of what you're consuming. Be aware of what you believe. Be aware of who you're giving your energy to. Be aware of who you're giving your power to. Don't just hand it over. You know, it's not a, it's not a trivial thing. Um, you know, don't give your power away to friends who don't care about you. Don't give your power away to some news article that's telling you to do something without actually researching it yourself. Don't just hand away your power like it's a little thing, you know? It's not it's not a something to take lightly. So just I just encourage you guys, please, please, please always question everything. Always question who you're giving your power to and really, really, really be mindful of it, you know? Really think about it. If you're being told something and your gut instinct is like, Meh, I don't know about that, that doesn't really add up. Or, you know, all your friends are thinking one way, but you're like, no, I'm not so sure about that. Don't just go along with what your friends are doing, you know? Listen to your gut instinct. Don't hand away your power. So that's really, really important. And I just wanted to emphasize that. So yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Don't trust mainstream media. Don't trust it. It's all owned by the same people and they all just want to get richer. <laughs> so don't, don't just hand it over. You know, here are some quotes that I found when I, I just literally typed in quotes about personal responsibility and I liked a lot of them. I love when that happens because sometimes it's really weird, cheesy quotes with like a cheesy sunset background and you're like, no, 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 this isn't hitting. But in this case, I found some good ones. Okay, so this one is by Jean-Paul Sartre. I don't know who that is, but I liked the quote. Man is condemned to be free because once thrown into the world, he is responsible for everything he does. It is up to you to give your life a meaning, which I was like, ooh, spicy. It's up to you to give your life a meaning. So, 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 so good. Next one by Confucius. Attack the evil that is within yourself rather than attacking the evil that is in others. God damn, I'm gonna get that tattooed on my forehead <laughs> because it's pointless. You can spend your entire life attacking 
evil everywhere around you and you're never gonna you're never gonna st stop you're never gonna finish you're never gonna even make a dent evil will always exist bad will always exist that we will never live in a utopian society it's never gonna happen bad will always be there but so will good and all you can fucking take ownership of is working on finding the good and the, you know emphasizing the good in yourself that's literally all you can do you know it's all you have control over accept the things you can't control just accept it you know you can't control the evil in others work on the evil in yourself i like this one too theodore roosevelt if you could kick the person in the pants responsible for most of your trouble you wouldn't sit for a month i liked that one because it's literally true <laughs> We cause ourselves so much grief and we make things so much harder for ourselves a lot of the time. <laughs> you know, I feel like that, that saying or whatever, like how you're hard on other people, but you're usually hard on 10 times as hard on yourself. Like why? That's such bullshit. Why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we talk so negatively towards ourselves? You know, why do we blame ourselves? Why do we beat ourselves up? Just be nicer to yourself. Be kinder. Be more understanding. Forgive yourself. Learn from your mistakes. Forgive yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Holding on to blame and guilt for yourself as much as for others is only holding on to pain. It's only hurting you when you could be, you know, healing from that and moving on. And that was my, my all-time favorite quote from Letting Go was, um, you did your best at that given time. If you could have done better, you would have. Every single thing in life can be summed up in that sentence you did your best at that given time if you could have done better you would have literally like you can you can never go back and say hey hey Dave, don't, don't, don't do that don't do that like you know that's not the right move don't do that you're gonna mess up like you can do better you're better than this in that moment that's all you could do you tried your best in that moment even and you can say well this person you know this person cheated on me or this person did this and that wasn't right yeah it's not right of course it's not right but in that moment that person couldn't do any better because if they, if they could have done better, they would have. And you can say, well, they knew not to do that, but they still chose to do it. You know, they still chose to do it or they still did it. There's a lot of factors that go into that, but all you can, all you can do is work on yourself, develop skills, develop, you know, mechanisms to, so next time if something bad comes up or it's, you're tempted to do something quote, quote, bad, you have more you've healed from things, you know how, you know about your past traumas, you know about things that trigger you, you, you know, um, you know, healing mechanisms, like, okay, something comes up, I really want to be angry right now, like, I really want to punch a wall or something, you can, okay, take a deep breath, actually, no, take 10 deep breaths, let's think about this, is this what we really want to do, blah, 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 do you want to do this, like, you, you can take this into your own hands, you don't have to give away your power to someone else, um, so I really, really liked that one. <laughs> so, so good. This one was is by Ido Koyanikan. Um, we do not get to choose how we start out in life. We do not get to choose the day we were born or the family we were born into, what we were named at birth, what country we were born in, and we do not get to choose our ancestry. All these things are predetermined by a higher power. By the time you're old enough to start making decisions for yourself, a lot of things in your life are already in place. It's important, therefore, that you focus on the future, the only thing that you can change. I think that's super powerful because we don't choose. We don't choose, like you said, we don't choose the country we're born in or the name we get or the, the day we're born. Although, if you believe in past lives and souls, and it just really depends on your beliefs. But I kind of do believe that our souls choose what, who we're, what body we're born into. I do believe that. So, you know, <laughs> it depends how deep you want to get get into this but to some level like you 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 have the karma that you're gonna have to experience in this life no matter what like you're coming in with karma you gotta experience some karma different you know you have to experience different lessons everyone has a lesson that they need to learn and all you can focus on is the future because that's the only thing you can change so are you going to spend you know the next five years pissed and upset and bitter about the past and guilty and beating yourself up so you're just stuck living in the past living in the past living in the past even though you can never relive the past you can never change the past all you can do is focus on what you can do right now so that your future is a better version than it could have been you know 
This one, this quote's by Lori Myers. The power behind taking responsibility for your actions lies in putting an end to negative thought patterns. You no longer dwell on what went wrong or focus on whom you're going to blame. You don't waste time building roadblocks to your success. Instead, you are set free and can now focus on succeeding. And then also, the final forming of a person's character lies in their own hands. Anne Frank. Oh, I love quotes. I love a good quote. I think all those are really, really, really powerful. A good old Pinterest quote or Google quote just does it for me, you know? <laughs> um, I think that was a lot. I just said a lot of things. Hopefully those, there was some food for thought in there. And I don't know. I guess, I guess my, just my message, main message is that we're so much more powerful than we think. And we have so much more power in our hands than we realize. Like we have so much power and control over our destiny, our emotions, our feelings, our reactions. Like we really do have that control. It's just up to us to kind of get it in check. Like, and of course, to different extents, like we all have our own shit we need to deal with. And my, my shit might not be as bad as your shit. You may have way more things you need to way more things to overcome or, you know, difficult childhood, difficult past, difficult upbringing, um, difficult circumstances, whatever it is, but it's still completely relative because what I've known is all I've ever known. I will never experience life as you as a same thing. You will never experience life as me. You'll never experience life as your best friend or your neighbor or your mom or your dad. Like all you have is what you have. There's no point ultimately um, doing the whole comparison game. Like, well, this person has it so much easier and that's why this comes to them because blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, yeah, but go ahead. Keep saying that if you want. Say that. Just scream that until your lungs give out. But you're literally doing nothing to change your current situation. You can yell about how much easier someone else has it, but like they're still going to be living their best life and you're just out here screaming about how hard yours, yours is. And that may be true. Like, but it's all completely subjective like what they this person experiences is all they've ever oh I'm sorry my mind is going a million miles right now like all you've ever known is all you've ever known you're never going to be able to change that same for someone else so just stay in your own fucking lane stay in your own lane work on you grind on you work to heal your trauma work to heal your past overcome things like plan out your fucking goals and dreams and just go after it and if you have a hard day you have a hard day and that's okay but don't be constantly dragging behind someone wishing you were them like you're never going to be them ever 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 and even if you know you want to be a kardashian and they have things so much easier kyler's the first self-made billionaire whatever even though it's like she's not a self-made billionaire she had this this and this yeah okay maybe that's true but like so so she still has all that money and you're over here complaining like it doesn't do anything to complain and of course you know every time i say these things you guys i'm saying them to myself too so I tell myself this. I'm like, girl, you're just complaining right now. Stop throwing yourself a fucking pity party. It's getting you nowhere. It gets you nowhere. It gets you nowhere. Maybe it feels good for a second. Okay, get it out. Get it out how unfair things are. But then, like, move the fuck on. Don't dwell on it. You know? So, that's the tea. That's the tea. Catherine and I were talking about this a lot. We had some good-ass talks on our girls' trip. <laughs> to share some of the things you guys said because I posted some questions on my podcast Instagram. If you're not following me there, make sure you do that. Acting My Age podcast. So I asked, what does personal responsibility mean to you? And I'll just read some of the responses. Holding yourself accountable to your internal standards, which I think is really a really good way to sum it up. Um, because everyone's standards for themselves, their internal standards, like she said, are completely different. So all you have to worry about is holding yourself accountable to your standards, your morals, your values. Another person said, maintaining self-love and being there for yourself, scheduling your needs before others. Next person said, ownership of my effects on others and consequences I bring to myself. That's a good one. Consequences I bring to myself. Yeah, because... We can, we do be bringing consequences to ourselves. So we, yeah, you got to take ownership of it. That's a good one. And ownership of your effects on others. Like the quote 
um, take ownership of the energy you bring into the space. Um, it's so fucking true. Like be mindful of the energy you're bringing and the effects you have on others. Because if someone's being super negative, bringing me down, saying mean shit, whatever, I'm not going to try to fix them. I'm just going to cut them out of my life. So Nida, (laughs) we've been watching Sage's mom's dog for like over two weeks now and love the girl, but (laughs) it's time for her to go home. She's like shit in the house so many times. She's barks all the time. Like right now, uh, next person said, keeping myself in check with work and school, staying true to my morals and values. Next person said to take care of yourself mentally and physically. To me, next person, (laughs) to me, it means that it's okay to say no to plans or to someone to take care of yourself. Next person said, taking care of myself first, commitment to myself, trust that I'll take action and be accountable to myself. Owning your actions, both good and bad. Waking up and taking every chance to make my dream life come true. Not letting down your future self. To me, personal responsibility means being able to depend on myself for the things I need. Maintaining my commitment to taking care of myself. To be able to accomplish my own goals and those which are set for me. Taking myself out of a victim complex. Controlling what I can control and leave the rest out. Yes, bitch. So much power in taking yourself out of the victim complex. This girl I follow on Instagram, I am Mel Wells. Um, She's very spiritual. Um, Her long-term boyfriend, they were madly in love. Um, like their whole thing was talking about healthy relationships. They're both relationship coaches. And, um, he did a plant medicine ceremony and in the ceremony, I guess he was shown that she wasn't the love of his life and he came back and broke up with her out of nowhere. And they were like soul soulmates, quote, quote, soulmates and all these things. And her, I just was like, holy fuck. Like, that's so freaking devastating. Completely out of nowhere. She's like, there were no problems. This was not a slow trickle. Like, it just came out of nowhere. And one thing I thought was super powerful in her caption was, I am not available to be a victim in this story. Which I was like, damn, bitch, that's so powerful. I'm not available to be a victim in this story. Um, Catherine, I showed Catherine, and she's like, yeah, I'm not available to be a victim in this story. Like, you are not available to be a victim. No matter what happened to you, you either decide if you're going to be a victim or not. So just say, make it clear that you are not available to be put in that victim mentality. Um, that is such a hard lesson, but I think it's so, so powerful. Okay. Next one. I asked, do you trust yourself more than others or others more than yourself? One person said, I trust a very small circle of others more than myself in some situations. Next person said, I trust others more. I've struggled with being kind to myself and my body for so long, which that totally like, do you trust your own concept of yourself? That's hard because like when you look in the mirror and you just think all these terrible things about yourself, but then your best friend will talk about how beautiful you are. It's like, well, do I trust this person or do I trust me? Like it's completely different story. So that's really hard. And that's like the ultimate, ultimate lesson, I guess is like, that's, that's a whole nother self-confidence. Whew, that's a whole nother thing, but I totally, I totally know what she meant by that. Um, I trust myself because I live in my own world. I can't live in other people's realities, which I fucking love that. So, so true. So good. Um, I trust my, I trust others more than myself because I'm way too indecisive and I overthink too much. I trust myself more than others. I don't know what others are truly thinking. Myself, 100%. I can control my own thoughts and perceptions far more than others. Most people said myself, like they trust themselves more than others. I trust myself more than anybody else. I have faith in others. I'm very trusting, but I can always count on me. Um, After being in a relationship where there is a lot of lying, I find it hard to trust others. Trust myself more than others. It's hard to let people in and you know yourself best. I totally trust myself more. I'm predictable. LOL. (laughs) Every day I'm learning to trust myself more and more. 
others usually, but today I made a big decision though, and it was definitely mine. I love that. I love that. <laughs> you can tell by how she typed it out. It was a big, it was a big thing. So I'm very excited for you. I don't know what it was, but I'm proud of you making the decisions for yourself. I'm working on trusting myself more because I always look to others when making a decision. Others more than myself, but I'm working on that in therapy. I trust myself. I know what feels right in my gut. There's so many answers. I, I really like reading this. It's kind of fun. Let me know if you guys want me to do more of this, like just asking you guys questions and reading them out. It's fun because then I can hear from more people and just able to get the, you know, get, get some different opinions and things. So next question, do you generally believe others or do you tend to question everything? Someone said, I am way too gullible. Next person said, I tend to question everything. Someone said, I tend to question everyone but myself. I question everything. I question everything, which I'm working on because I need to learn to have faith in strangers. I believe I will believe a small group of close friends and family. Otherwise, I question everything. I tend to be quite naive about stuff and want to believe the good in everyone. I will at face value trust most things. I hate to say it, but question everything. <laughs> I believe others. I think it's good to be skeptical at times, but I prefer to start believing before doubting. I believe others almost to a fault. I generally believe people because I'm gullible and too kind to call them out. I question things. I believe others, but not about everything. I think I, I have enough self-trust to know. I believe only those I trust. I question everything, but listen to everything, which I think that's, that's very valuable. I question everything, but I listen. Because if you're not really listening, then you're, it's just like, who was I just talking about this with? Like certain people, when you're having a conversation with them, you can just tell they're not really listening. They're just waiting until you stop talking so they can say how they feel about it. Like that's not really listening. <laughs> so truly listening and giving that person the gift of your complete presence is so, so, so valuable. There is nothing that feels better in this world than really being listened to and heard and feeling like safe. Like again, Catherine and I just had the best little girls trip and the way that we listen to each other and communicate with each other is just so, so beautiful. And oh God, I fucking love it. Most of the time I like to believe what other people say and trust that they have good intentions. I'm inherently skeptical of others. Sad face. Question everything. Blind faith in anything isn't that great. I think. Let's see. How do I feel about this? Do you generally believe others or do you tend to question everything? More and more, I'm learning to question everything externally. I trust the good in people that I know, you know, like I also do trust that humans can be inherently good. Like I, I do trust the beauty, the inherent beauty in the world. Absolutely. And I do completely trust that there is divine timing and there's a divine path for me. Um, but I do not trust or believe that anyone else has my back better than I do. And I definitely, definitely question every fucking thing on social media and the mainstream media, everything. I don't believe a goddamn word of it unless I research it myself. Um, I question that, but in terms of like, like my loved ones, when they say something and I can feel in my gut that it's true, I believe that I don't question it. Um, so it's kind of a mixed bag because I do think being able to just trust and surrender to like love, accepting love from people is really, really beautiful. And if you're always questioning people's motives and people's love for you, then that's just totally exhausting and you'll never be able to really like relax and sink into a trusting, loving relationship because you're just questioning everything and you don't trust them. That's a whole nother topic. <laughs> Okay, next question was, would you rather make your own mistakes or learn from others' mistakes? Make my own, probably make my own, make my own, <laughs> make my own, make my own. Most people said make my own. I've been so worried about other people's mistakes that I haven't learned from my own. Ooh, that's interesting. I make my own mistakes because I'll most likely not repeat the same mistake twice. I learn from others. I make my own mistakes 100%. There's no way I could live my life not living. Both. I feel I'm more likely to avoid mistakes if I see others make them. I find so much value in making mistakes. It's in these times that, like these that we learn and grow the most. I learn from others' mistakes. 
I think both are valid. I would never wish for others to go through difficult situations, though. I learn from others because that makes my life easier. We have to make mistakes, and it's important to do so, but I try to learn from others. I feel like learning from your own mistakes has more of an impact, but most of the time, I don't want to. <laughs> I learn from others. I'm afraid of failure. I think both are important. Some lessons can, can only really be learned through your own doing. I hate making mistakes. I'd rather learn from others. I love to learn from mine because nobody makes the exact same mistakes as me. I learn from my own. It's the only way to grow. Okay, these are like rapid fire little poll questions. So it's just, you know, two answers. I said, do you either forgive quickly or hold a grudge? And so far, forgive quickly is winning. It's 59% forgive quickly, 41% hold a grudge, which is interesting. Um, that was another topic for Catherine and I this weekend a lot was forgiving, forgiving, forgiving. And it's hard. It's hard to forgive sometimes. But that's the ultimate way to heal a wound is to be in the point where you can forgive someone. And this really, really wonderful quote that I heard on the Aubrey Marcus podcast was, forgive has the word give in it. It's a gift for gift. Um, you're giving someone, you know, everyone thinks, oh, I'm giving you my forgiveness. Like if you tell someone you forgive them, it's like you're giving them something like, here you go. You have my forgiveness. Like you're welcome. Do you feel better now? Like now that this person can stop feeling guilty about it, but actually you're giving the forgiveness as a gift to yourself. Forgiveness is a gift to yourself, not to others. Maybe it benefits the other person, but if that other person is still beating themselves up for the next 15 years about whatever they did to you they're still in hell, you know, they're, they haven't healed from it. And your forgiveness really doesn't mean anything because they're still going to be beating themselves up over and over and over for the next 15 years. So ultimately you forgive someone so that you can take away that weight from yourself. Um, take away that pain from your heart. Don't, you know, when you forgive, you can like, it's like, I kind of picture it as, yeah, taking away weight on your heart. It's weighing you down. It's weighing you down. It's weighing you down. It's making you, it's like a shield, like a hard shield over your heart. And when you can forgive, you let it go and you allow new things to come in. So forgiveness is really a gift to yourself and it's hard. <laughs> it's very, very hard, <laughs> but that's the ultimate, ultimate goal, right? So next question was, do you trust the mainstream media? Yes, mostly got 31% and no, not at all. Got 69%. I'm on the no, not at all side of that spectrum. Um, but also I will say someone's like, I trust the German mainstream media, but I think the U S is a whole nother story. So it really does depend where you live because I don't know. All I know is the U S and I don't trust, I don't trust it. Um, Oh God, the guy, the guy with his leaf blower is out again. So sorry guys. Um, Next question, do you feel connected to your gut instinct? 79% said yes, very, and 21% said not really. <laughs> Next one, who do you judge more harshly, myself or others? Myself got 86% and others got 14, which is so telling. Yeah, like you beat some however much you'd beat someone else up for doing something, you'd beat yourself up 10 times more. Um, which I definitely feel like that. <laughs> Because you're the one dragging it out in your mind. Like, no matter how mad you are at someone, it'll pro probably, maybe, like, let's see. What would, I don't know. If your friend came over and they looked like a mess and they were just, I don't know, like, didn't brush their teeth and looked like a mess, you would you would just be like, oh, you look kind of like a mess. But if you're the one that looks like a mess, you're like, god damn it, I look like a mess. And you're always thinking about it. You're beating yourself up. You're just you know, you're so much harder on yourself because you keep replaying that story to yourself in your mind over and over and over and over and over. <laughs> um, next question is, do you feel truly free, free of worries, doubt, guilt, external judgment, external pressure, et cetera, et cetera. 12% said hell yes. And 88% said not really, which I think is, I kind of, it's kind of a loaded question because I think to be truly, truly free means you're like, you've, you've reached enlightenment like that. That's, you know, truly free of everything and only living in like, like pure consciousness and just fucking vibing all the time. Like that's, 
that's really up there. <laughs> so I definitely am not truly free. I still have my, you know, my things I need to work on, the things holding me back, the things that plague my mind, the doubts, the worries, all of those things. But I can confidently say I am on the path to becoming free. And I do very much prioritize my freedom. And if you don't prioritize your freedom, that's not good. <laughs> you really need to prioritize your freedom. Again, your self-sovereignty. Are you truly free? Do you feel free? Do you feel free to live the life you want? Do you feel free to experience joy and love and happiness? You know? So for the people that said, hell yes, 12%, good for you. Like, yes, love that for you. Um, next one, have you found your tribe? 31% said yes. 69% said not yet. And then the last one I asked was, what do you want, what do you want most in life? Um, so here are some people's answers. To feel secure in myself, get to know myself better, and challenge myself. The next person said love and happiness. The next person said right now to be loved and to be happy. Going through a breakup after seven years right now. It's been rough. Oof, sending you love. Um, next person said happiness. Next person said I want to feel inner peace and knowing I'm being... I'm being and living my most authentic self and path. That's lovely. To be able to have children someday, a connection to the earth, passion, purpose, love, and happiness, serenity, to travel and experience everything life has to offer, to open all the doors that I can, happiness, fulfillment, enjoyment, unapologetic existence, safety, and a brighter promise for tomorrow. That's beautiful. I want that free feeling, doing whatever makes me happiest without worry of judgment. Feelings of fulfillment, earnest and genuine identity, and love and abundance. To be happy, to live life fully, to be open and honest with myself and others. I want to feel giggly. <laughs> I love that. That's beautiful. Um, to be truly the best version of myself and to live my best life. To be a role model for my younger self and be what I needed growing up to someone. That's very, that's beautiful too. Um, happiness, family, stability, to love myself, to live in the moment and connect with the earth. To peel off the layers and come back home to myself. Oh, that's so beautiful. Um, yeah, that's that's really nice because I think I think I've talked about this, you know, trying to hit this home, but everything that you're learning in this life, I believe you're just simply being reminded of it. When someone tells you you're beautiful and you believe them, you feel beautiful, it's not like they told you something new. It's simply remembering remembering the innate beauty that you have, you know, remembering the innate joy that you have. It's not a new thing. You're just remembering it. Like that saying, we're all walking each other home. I really think it's just so beautiful, you know, like we're not born as a baby, like feeling insecure about this and that and this and that. When you're, you know, a toddler, you just want to play and dream and have magic and be silly and giggly and just be free, run around naked if you want and scream and shit and cry. Like, <laughs> you know, we put all these constraints on ourselves, and society does, and we're just coming back to that freedom and that, you know, child that just wants to play and love and laugh and all those things. So very beautiful. Um, next person said peace of mind and acceptance of myself, freedom and a slow, peaceful way of living to evolve into myself and show up for others, to have a family and love and love my connections to be fulfilled within myself and not rely on external validation. Building my own happiness and world. It's simple, but I just want to feel fulfilled and content. Freedom, happiness, joy, love and peace. To be happy and abundant, purpose, happiness. Most people said happiness. <laughs> um, children and a family, not to be confined by the constraints of a nine to five job. Ultimate happiness. To feel calm and at peace and to enjoy everything that life throws at me. I want to feel fulfilled with what I'm doing, like I'm contributing to a better world, to build a family, peace, be proud of myself, enlightenment, peace. A lot of people said peace. <laughs> to feel utterly at peace with the person I've grown to be, to make little me ma proud. I want my life to be meaningful. Oh, they're also beautiful. There's so many. So I really, really liked doing those little mini questions. So let me know if you guys want me to do that again, because I think that's really fun. And I obviously think the best part about this podcast is hearing, you know, having your input and your, your contribution to it. Um, cause as we know, I can blab for a long time by myself, but I like to include, you know, you guys, <laughs> it's the whole point. Y'all are the whole point of the podcast. So 
I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'm trying to think what if I, if someone, if I saw that Instagram story, what do you want most in life? How would I answer? My, the thing that comes to my mind first is to live a life fully lived. That's something I've been writing about recently, to live a life fully lived. And for me, that like sums up everything. Presence, honesty, peace, loving, like being able to love freely and openly and wildly and, you know, happiness. Um, because I think happiness really is just being in the present moment and being able to enjoy it because you're present, not worrying about the past or the future or any of that, just being in the present. So yeah, living a life fully lived means being in the present and having the ability to appreciate everything around you and having the tools to cope with the bad times and having the wisdom to appreciate the good times and all those things. So But of course, what I want most in life is to have a family and be a mom and to love. Ah, (laughs) so many things. I could talk about that for hours, but I'm going to wrap it up here. I blabbed and blabbed and I really have to pee. So (laughs) I'm going to end it out. I hope you guys are having an amazing week. I love you so much. Don't let the bastards get you down. (laughs) As the song says, don't let the bastards get you down, bring you down. Um, You got this. You're great hope this personal responsibility thing was a nice kick in the ass or a gentle kick in the ass or a reminder, I guess. But, um, yeah, don't hand away your power, man. Do not hand away your fucking power. Don't just believe everything you hear and don't believe, oh, this is the whole thing I missed. Don't believe that someone else has your best interest at heart just because it seems like they do and they seem like a good person. If you don't know them, if you don't know them, Don't just believe this person, this figurehead, these outlets, these news outlets, this media, this blah, blah, blah. Just because they seem like a nice person, they seem like they have their best interest at heart. When there's money talking, greed talking, things get a little twisted. People let greed take over their, their souls and their bodies and make them do crazy things. So don't just hand over your power. When money's talking, things get a little crazy. So I love you guys and um, I will talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave this podcast a review if you liked it, but I don't really give a fuck. My rating's trash on iTunes, but I don't really care because whoever listens is supposed to listen and those haters are just freaking noobs. So sucks for them to be so hateful. I hope they can get out of that one day. (laughs) We're just over here vibing. Bye.